All right. Welcome everybody to BNI Talks. This week we've got Mike Savage back for his, I think, third time. Third and time. yeah, and this one is called Triple Threat. There are only three ways to grow your business. And uh, I got a sneak peek at this, and it's pretty good. These are some serious savage secrets you can get here today. I like that hashtag, <laughs> savage secrets. There you go. Uh, all right, so I'm going to turn it over to Mike. We've got a lot to cover today, so take some notes and, and get ready. So take it away, Mike. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Super excited. Welcome to another uh, BNI Talks webinar with with uh, Super Steve, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be hitting the subject of sales today, and it's called Triple Threat. There's only three ways to grow your business, and I'm gonna step through and and. Lots of times throughout the presentation, I'm going to ask you to put a little bit of info into the chat box so that I can get a little better sense of who you are and so that I can tailor the conversation to make sure it works for you. So let's get rolling. So my goals for today, um, number one, I'm hoping that you can have some light bulb moments, some breakthrough, something that will get you intrigued and get you thinking, asking questions. Um, and that's really the second piece of it. Ask a lot of questions. Ask questions about you, your business, your strategies. Hopefully the subject matter will get you thinking about things and thinking about your business a little bit differently. So those are my two goals for today. And hopefully I'm not hopefully, I'm gonna absolutely kick butt and deliver on that. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, my journey is your journey. We all do the same thing, right? We have this confidence, we have this ability, we have this like, I'm gonna go off and do this on my own. I'm gonna take control of my destiny. And the reality is after building seven different companies, it's a roller coaster, right? It's highs and lows, ups and downs, it's emotional challenges, it's financial challenges, it's spiritual challenges. It's oftentimes really crazy. And so I think that, you know, number one, my greatest passion in the world, the ones I have so much respect for, is any entrepreneur, anyone that goes out there and says, I'm gonna take the, the bull by the horns and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear it up. So, you know, I'm there and I get it. So I just wanted to share with you quickly, sort of my journey on the world of entrepreneurship. It started, I grew up on a golf course and I used to go and hang out in the woods. Most of the balls that I found were my own balls, um, but I would hang out in the woods and collect the balls and put them in these egg crate cartons and go and sit in the, sit by the tee boxes way in the woods so that the, the clubhouse wouldn't see me. Now, believe it or not, this is not, I st did this starting at age 11, but this is actually, even though I look 11, this is my senior picture in high school. So um, I didn't blossom for a while, but um, that was really my first business. My most important business is, and I hope all of yours as well, my family. Um, I've been blessed to uh, raise two kids with my wonderful wife. They've gone from cradle to now they're both in college. So it's a, it's a fun journey. And I look at this and I attack this as, as rigorously as any other business. But my first real company started, uh, this was, um, I, this was it's, a, it's an old fashioned picture because it was an old, long time ago. This is a stand master. And if you're familiar with what a stand master is, just a piece of fitness equipment. And I used to work out during college and after, and, and I was bored. I was bored and so I would, I bent a piece of plastic into a, a reading rack and I actually did the first one in my mother's oven and I caught it on fire. So that wasn't the brightest move. Um, but I, this was like, I needed to do this for myself. Other people liked it. They ended up selling products into health clubs and things like that. Um, and, and like I said, I started the same spot. This is our first assembly line. Uh, vintage 1980 furniture. And if you think that's um, nauseating, you should have seen some of the clothes I wore. Um, our first warehouse actually was a, a tool shed in the back of our house. We'd, we actually had full-time jobs. That's why we're dressed up and we'd, you know, we'd go and work at, uh, at home from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and go do our jobs and then come home and work from you know, 5 p.m. until midnight or whatever as we were starting to build our businesses. So, but you know, I always say when you start a business, it's beautiful. Really, at the beginning, it's beautiful because you get to work half days. You just get to choose which 12 hours it is. And that's part of the entrepreneurial journey when you get started. Then I got, you know, another different company we built. I got 
our first million dollar order. And that was exciting. And I remember the, the buyer, you know, my partner and I worked really hard. We were making fitness and exercise equipment and worked really hard and sold this into Costco. And he sent the email, it was only three words, pull the trigger. So we pulled the trigger and we cracked a couple of beers and celebrated. That was super exciting. But guess what, folks? Business isn't always the highs, is oftentimes is lows. And I learned a lesson. We used to sell products, one of my businesses, into retail. And I learned a very important lesson. Sometimes retailers don't play well in the sandbox together. For example, Target and Walmart do not play well in the sandbox together. And we had a very uh, great brand. We were selling it into Target and, and Kohl's and Walmart wanted the brand. And we said, no, no, you're fine. You'll enjoy the brand you got. So then we got the Dear John letter after that. So that wasn't fun. But the point is, it's all about entrepreneurial journey is highs and lows. It's ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. And my greatest passion is working with entrepreneurs that are looking to grow. They're driven. They're, you know, they might be taking their business to a level that they've never been to before. They're overwhelmed. And I always say there's only two ways to learn things in life. Your experience or someone else's. And if it's yours, it usually hurts more, costs more, and takes longer. So, you know, that's why I have, uh, you know, three coaches in my life right now. Um, but I always say this as you're going through this entrepreneurial journey. This is my little tagline. If your bathroom mirror is your board of advisors, it might be fun to invite Mike to the next meeting. So that's just, uh, you know, a, a little bit about me. Oh, and also, I am blessed. I am beyond grateful to be part of the BNI family. Um, you know, this is like Steve said, this is my third time being able to speak on BNI Talks. And I've, I've had a couple of other opportunities with, with Cambodia and Business Booster. And I'm so, so excited. And I hope all of you are attending the BNI USA National Conference, whether physically or virtually. If you come physically, I will buy you a cocktail as you know, I'm super excited to be on stage. Um, and virtually also, I got some information at the end of the slides, only $49 folks. All you need is one little tidbit of info and it can change your life. So oftentimes I'm asked, Mike, how did you get into entrepreneurship? And so my answer is always to say, I was inspired. So I want you to think about and visualize who you think would be the most inspiring, inspirational leader. They're up on stage. They can get you motivated and excited and visualize that person and visualize them up on stage. That's the person that drove me into entrepreneurship. And she may look a little bit different than you think. This is actually the inspiration for me in my journey of entrepreneurship is my mom. She's no longer with us, she passed a few years ago. But it all started when I was 23 years old. I was on top of the world. I was a graduate, it was in graduate school. I had about six weeks left of finishing my master's degree. I'm writing my thesis. You know, I had a job already lined up. My, I had a girlfriend for three and a half years and we were engaged to be married. And it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal time in my life. I staying over at my girlfriend's house one night and I got a call at eight in the morning from my sister. Uh, she was 16 at the time, 16 or 17. She said, Mike, dad's not breathing. I go, well, what the hell are you talking about? So that's not breathing. I'm like, first thing, why are you calling me? Call the paramedics. Got in the car, flew like a bat out of hell, got to my home. My dad's laying there. You know, he wasn't breathing. And I ended up um, doing CPR on my father. Started. Uh, paramedics busted in right after that. Uh, took him to the hospital. And long story short, he, he ended up passing away. He was 50, 51 years old. I mean, he owned a pharmacy. And during this period after my dad died, I was like, look, I'm going to be home. I want to be with my mom. And mom was very religious. And so Mike was not going to be at home uh, unwed. So Mike had a shotgun wedding 28 days after his dad died, which I strongly recommend you don't do something like that. Uh, don't make a major decision after a tragedy in your life. Not, not too bright. Um, but I ended up getting married. And then three months later, my aunt died three months late after that. My grandmother died, which is my mother's mother. So now she lost both her husband and her mother in six months. And then two months after that, my wife of 10 months decided to leave me. So not very fun period in my life. But the thing that inspired me is it was not a fun period in my mom's life either. 
She's now got three kids and she's a single mother. But my dad owned a pharmacy. And my mom was, you know, in the olden day called a secretary, uh, today maybe executive assistant, administrative assistant. She never tried to run a business. She never knew anything about running a business. And I said, so mom, what are we going to do with dad's business? She goes, I'm going to run it. I go, what the hell are you talking about? You're not, you're going to run her business? She goes, yeah, I'm going to run the business. Like, oh my God. Well, guess what? She did. She went in there. She took the bull by the horn. She hired some pharmacists. She got things going. And, you know, it's part of the challenge of running businesses is um, CVS Pharmacy ended up moving in across the street two years later. And she did end up losing the business. But I gleaned so much courage and so much passion from her to take the risk to do this. That's what drove me into entrepreneurship. So that's why I'm here today. That's why I've started the businesses. And I want to get into triple threat, talk about some sales, talk about how do we grow our businesses. And I first heard about this, only three ways to grow your business, about a decade ago. I was at a Tony Robbins event and a guy, Jay Abraham, came up on stage and said, there's only three ways to grow your business. And I sat out in the audience. I said, BS, man, you got to prove it to me. There's got to be hundreds of ways to grow a company. Well, guess what? There's not. There's three. You can, if, and I'm making the assumption that you have a business at this point, but there's only three ways to grow it. You increase your average order, you can increase the frequency of order, or you can increase the number of customers. Now, it's not, it, you know, it, it sounds pretty simple, but when you start to peel back the layers of the onion, which I will, there's really only three ways. Now, I'm not going to be able to get to everything today. I'm really not. But I have written a book and I am releasing it today right now this is the first time it's been public um, and you can download the book at the savagesecrets.com slash triple or you can scan the barcode and i'm going to ask you if you scan it don't go and register now and don't because i don't want you to to miss out on the presentation i want you to stay sort of dialed in but um and i'm going to put this slide up also a little bit later on in the presentation do me a favor now though because i want to make sure that i can tailor the subject matter as it relates to you. So if you can put an A, B, C, D, or E in the chat box um, where it just kind of shows, you know, wh what, what, where is your business? Are you starting out? And, and if, you're, if you haven't started a business yet or you're maybe a nonprofit or you work for another business, that, put an E there, that's fine. Um, but I'm just trying to get a sense of the, so we got some A, B, C, D, D. So, all right, this is perfect. Thank you, thank you all for putting your, your info in there. Um, before we get into the nuts and bolts, I'm going to spend literally two minutes on a little, a little tour down philosophy lane. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but this is the most powerful thing on earth. Our brain, every product, every service, everything in the world was once the idea in the mind of one person. And garbage in equals garbage out. So when you start to put the good stuff in, you're going to get the good stuff out. Your thoughts, beliefs, language, all of this stuff is incredibly important and powerful. And why reason I'm saying this is because I believe as entrepreneurs that we live three movies simultaneously. I call that the triple, the, the entrepreneurs trilogy. The three movies are heart set, mindset, and skill set. And we're the CEO, we're the star, we're the, we're the Tom Cruise, we're the Jennifer Aniston of every single one of these movies. Um, but they're all important. And it's all part of the journey. The journey of entrepreneurship is not just about spreadsheets and social media. There's more to it because we're men and women long before we were businessmen and women. And so the first movie to me is the most important one. It's called Heart Set. And our health, which is one of those things that we take for granted until it's taken away. I got a call literally two weeks ago from a buddy of mine. His 16-year-old son was diagnosed with cancer. I got a call a month ago, one of my really good friends was uh, diagnosed with ALS. If you've got your health, cherish it like there's no tomorrow. But our health, coupled with our relationships, our friends and our family, and our happiness, this is what life is all about. And I know I'm getting philosophical here. I'm going to promise you I'm going to get into the, the meat and potatoes of this thing. But this is the most important move. If you've got your health, your relationships, and your happiness, you've already won. So... Keep that in mind. But as entrepreneurs, as go-getters that were driven to get to that next level, second movie is called Mindset, right? And there's a fact that we are who we are, we are where we are because of what we've put into our mind since birth. No one can deny that. So are you putting the good stuff in 
If you, if you are, then you're going to get the good stuff out. But our mind, our motivation, our goals, our dreams, our passions, you know, those things that, that propel us and pull us into the future, um, and our movement. Do we actually sit there and visualize about being, having a great big business and a wonderful family and great health? Or do we sit on the couch and hope that it happens? We don't, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen magically. So this thing also changes all the time, the stuff that's going into our lives. And then finally, the third movie is what I call skill set. It's fundamentals of business. I'm not going to go through a ton of detail, but we all have a product or service. Everyone that's running a company is solving a problem. Make no mistake about it. We're solving problems. That's what entrepreneurs do. So we've got our product, our service, we've got our target market, ideal client, and we've got our strategic marketing plan. And it's really, this thing is constantly changing as well. All three of these movies are incredibly, incredibly important. I call this the Entrepreneur's Trilogy. And when I created this slide, I was so excited. This is, I geeked out big time. And I'm showing this to my son. My son is a sophomore in college at Babson College. It's an entrepreneurial school in Massachusetts. And I said, hey, kid, guess what? See this, this is what entrepreneur is all about. And I said, I call this the universal law of entrepreneurial impermanence. I, had this, I thought that was a really cool line. He goes, dad, I don't, what the hell does that mean? I don't even understand it. I go, well, you know, entrepreneur, everything's changing. Every, you know, it's constantly changing in business. He goes, why don't you just say, everything's always changing. So my 19 year old son slapped me in the head and said, we are no longer using the universal law of entrepreneurial permanence. We're just gonna say stuff is always changing. So I simplified it, thank you to my son, Brant. Today, we're gonna to spend time in this area of sales and marketing. Now sales and marketing go together unlike any two departments in your business. And guess what? They are not the same. Sales and marketing are not the same, they're different but they do go together. Kind of like peanut butter and jelly, Donnie and Marie, Laverne and Shirley, um, Yogi Bear and Boo Boo. Now, if you know those analogies, you're over the age of 40, I guarantee it. And you may not know them if you're younger, but my point is sales and marketing go together. Very important. Most of the time, when people are trying to build their businesses, they start with, I need more customers, right? I got to go out there. I got to get more customers. I got to do all these things to make sure that I can bring in more customers to my business. And the reality is, it is important. If you're just starting out in business, if you're just getting going, guess what? You don't have a choice. You need more customers. You need your first customer. You need your second customer. But if you've been in business for a while and you are out there, you know, fighting and battling and challenging yourself, I would say that going off and getting new customers is really the third thing you should do. And here's why. I think that the first thing, there's, there's really, like I said, there's three approaches, there's three ways to go out there and build your business. I'm going to challenge you and say, the first one should be, how do I increase the average order of my existing customers? If you have residual customers, if you sell products or services, if you have someone that's buying from you all the time, how can I increase the average order to that person? And there's a variety of ways. Like I said, I'm gonna get only be able to talk a couple of them in today's presentation, but in the book, I go into a lot more detail. But increase the average order. This is one of my favorites. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples and you're gonna be able to take these ideas and these analogies and take them and morph them into your business. What are the things that you can do for your company? Now, my wife, Donna, and I do enjoy going out to dinner. You know, we're, I don't know if we're empty nesters yet. I'm not exactly sure what the, what the real definition is, but I got two kids in college and they don't live at home. So, you know, they do come back, uh, especially when they need their laundry done or they need food money or something like that. Um, but we go out to dinner. And when we go out to dinner, we like to go to nice restaurants and oftentimes, of course, over the last eight years or so, um, maybe five years, I've started to notice a lot of restaurants say, would you like a Cortino or would you like a nine ounce glass of wine versus a six ounce glass of wine? You know, it's always, yeah, sure, you know, whatever. And I didn't really start to think about the, the macro level impact of one simple question. And so being the nerd that I am, 
I said, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to really see what the impact is for a restaurant or a restaurant chain. So I went and dug into a chain that's up in New England. I'm not going to go into the name of the company, but they've got about 100 locations. They serve about 20 million guests a year. And we go there often because it's near our home. And I said, all right, well, you know, I started to ask the, 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 the bartenders and the servers, like, you know, about how many people order a Cortino? You know, it's like, you guys started doing this. And, you know, so get different answers anywhere, you know, 50%, 70%. One person said, everybody orders a Cortino. So I made some assumptions. And I'm, and I'm doing this to share with you the impact of one question in one slight little change in your business or your philosophy. I did have to make some assumptions. Before I give you the final answer, I did have to make some assumptions. I said, of the 20 million people, half of them are adults, 10% order a glass of wine. Of the people that order wine, you know, 90% order Cortino. It can be higher, it can be lower. These are the selling prices and this is the cost of a bottle of wine for the restaurant. I made some basic assumptions. But the reality is, the question, would you like a Cortino made such a major difference in this restaurant chain to the tune of 3.2 million in sales and 1.9 million in profit. It's crazy the importance of one question and the impact that it can have on your business. Second one is the mouse in a maze, right? You know, what happened when I put a mouse in a maze? This is a thing that's gone on for, for generations, I think. You know, the guy, little dude goes in there and he's like, you put the cheese on the other side and he's like, well, how do I get there? Well, it takes him or her a long time. You know, they're stuck in the corner. They keep move, moseying around. But eventually, they get to the cheese, right? But there's a lot of downtime while they get into the cheese. Well, guess what? Retailers have used this philosophy on us for years. Think about when you go to check out of a grocery store. You go to check out, and there's people in line, and, you know, there's one, two carriages. What's off to the side, right? There's chocolate and mints and gum and and uh the the magazines are there you know you get to see you know the big headlines you know what j-lo wore today and uh you know all these different stories the whole purpose of that is to increase the average order of you going through the process increase the average order the one company i think that has nailed it better than everybody is tj maxx this is the greatest you get in line to check out you can see the sea of people in line. And as they are in line waiting, what's to their left and what's to their right? $20 and under items. Because $20 and under items are, hey, maybe I'll just pick it up and drop it in my basket. Why are they doing this? They're doing this to increase the average order. Now, there's a, a zillion other ways that you can increase the average order. But what I do is I challenge you, go online, go to our friend, Mr. or Miss Google, and put in the best ways to increase the average order for whatever your industry is, because there's always gonna be some form of information. Number two, increase the frequency of, your, frequency of orders. This is the sister and equally powerful uh, method to grow your business. There are three words that matter and only three words in the world of increasing the frequency of orders. You need to be fast, you need to be easy, and you need to be convenient. Now, there are things that, you know, 30 years ago, there was no such thing as drive through There was no such thing as delivery. There was, all of these things have, have surfaced over time because these businesses said, how do I increase? And actually, that, those things do both. They increase the average order and the frequency of order. But there's so many methodologies that businesses are using today, and you can use as well to increase your average order. Uh, I'm sorry, increase your frequency of order. I'm going to share with you just a couple of examples. I am a soda water guy. I enjoy drinking soda water throughout the day. And typically my process is go to, uh, go to the uh, warehouse club, get myself a case of soda water, whatever it could be. I actually don't drink Perrier, but I couldn't find a picture of my other one. Um, but this whole process is slow. It's a pain in the butt. You got to go there. These things are actually pretty heavy. You got to put them in your car. It's inconvenient because you can't get it unless you go there. And I'm, you know, my, my daughter's actually an environmental engineering person. And so, you know, we're programmed, even though we've recycled forever, um, it's wasteful. 
know, and so what did I do? I invested in this thing called SodaStream. If you don't know what SodaStream is, you can make, you can make sparkling water at home. And I don't get a commission, but there is a fact that I do use this. This is my sparkling water. I do need to take a sip. But the reason that I fell in love with this is, number one, what did I say the strategy was? Fast, easy, and convenient. What was my concern? Well, say this thing works. Come home, I get this CO2 cartridge, I pop it in there, I can take regular water, I can make sparkling water. How do I get new CO2 cartridges? That was my concern. Well, guess what? They figured it out. They got smart, right? They deliver, if I order two CO2 cartridges, they deliver me two. And when I have two empty ones, I just put them in the prepaid envelope, uh, the prepaid box, stick the label on there, ship it back. They automatically charge my credit card and then they ship me two. So it, they did what? They are now fast, easy and convenient. I call it fast, easy and convenient certified. They made the process of reordering super simple. Another one, personal one. This is a picture of my ride and mow. I like to every now and then get on my ride and mow. And some people say, well, why don't you have someone else mow your lawn? I'm like, because I kind of like when I get to see the straight lines. It's like, it's my geek out time. Um, but every year, there's a dealership close by that sends me an email the day after Thanksgiving. Mike, would you like to tune up your tractor? All I do is reply, sure. They come to the house. They pick it up. They analyze it. They email me a quote. Mike, would you like me to finish the work? I reply, yes. They tune it up. They um, you know, email me a receipt. They ch automatically charge my credit card and they drop the mower back off at my house. Fast, easy, and convenient. They have a customer for life. And I would challenge you now to think about your business. Think about how you can take what you do and make it faster, easier, and more convenient. Now, there's always ways to, there's, there's, like I said, there's unlimited number of ways to increase the frequency of orders. And I would challenge you again, go online, use the Google, you know, and just punch in some questions about how can I increase the frequency of orders of my business, your industry. This methodology is industry agnostic. It does not matter. Everyone from Apple to, you know, Fred's flower shop, same thing. Always, they have a product, they have a target market, and they have a strategic marketing plan. And they're trying to increase their business. And instead of just going after new customers, these are two super, super great ways to think about growing. Now, here's the mother of all ways to grow your business, right? Increasing the number of customers. This is the world of unlimited possibility. There are an unlimited number of ways that you can go and increase your business and, and increase the number of customers. The first one I strongly recommend is we live in a five-star world, folks. It doesn't matter what business you are in, you are being rated and evaluated and challenged um, in the world of public opinion. This, you know, I personally don't think there's a lot of security left in the world. It is a tragedy, but there is a reality. You can see places like Facebook and a lot of these other people that are just being, you know, mashed and bashed in the in the in the in the public world because of all of the information that they have on us. But we do live in a five-star world. And one of the things that I would say is when you do get a five-star review, you could be selling B2B or B2C, it doesn't matter. You're being you're being evaluated. But when you get five stars or you get a good review or you have a happy customer, both you and the customer are happy. Guess what? This is the time to ask for a referral. You don't want to ask for a referral or a recommendation when someone's pissed off at you. Now, if you get a bad review, guess what? I also think that's good. I would not run away from bad reviews. When you guys watch this webinar today, if you think that I'm not doing something great, tell me. I don't care. I will work on it to try and improve it. So when you get a one-star review, nobody's happy there, right? You know, you're not happy. The customer's not happy. But it's a perfect time for you to ask questions. It's a perfect time for you to reevaluate 
your business, your service, the things that you're doing in your industry. And number one, like I always believe, and I find it mind boggling why so many businesses don't ask for referrals. When you get someone in that really peak state and they're very excited and they're delighted the service that you've delivered them, that's the perfect time. So many businesses don't ask for referrals. It blows my mind. So I would recommend that as number one. Number two, be innovative, stand out. You know, commodity is easy. Anyone can do commodity. Anybody can do average. Excellence is not easy. Excellence is hard work. Excellence in, in having ultimate pride in your business, that's, unfortunately, it's rare. I love seeing it though. But I want to share with you a story of one of my clients. I started working with Josh. He runs this really great uh, general contracting company. Um, I started working with him a couple of years ago. Small business, maybe 100 grand in sales, one employee. And he had a goal. He had a vision. He said, Mike, I don't want to wear a tool belt anymore. I'm like, well, what do you mean? What it meant was he wanted to build a business. He wanted to create infrastructure. He wanted to create systems. He wanted to learn how to build a, a team and a culture. And his mindset wasn't good. Lots of times when I'm working with entrepreneurs, like, hey, let's talk about the stuff in the business, you know, the sales and strength. Most of the time, the challenges are right between the ears. Like I said with that other example um, at the very beginning where I said, garbage in, garbage out. But Josh was having a lot of garbage in, garbage out. So what we did was we started to look at his business, transformed his business. And I would love to take credit for this, but I didn't. Whenever Josh goes into a new neighborhood, we've all seen this. We've all seen contractors in our neighborhoods. You know, they come in, they bring their, their guys or their women and they, and they uh, bring their trucks. And you know, th there could be a neighborhood of 50, 100, 100 homes. When Josh goes in, as soon as he goes in, and I thought this was the most, one of the most brilliant things I've heard in business, he takes his door hanger and he goes and he hangs the door hanger on every house for miles. And he basically says, hey, I just wanna let you know, we're in the neighborhood. If we get in the way, you know, just shoot me a text or an email, just give me a call. But we're over at the Johnson's house and they're at 52 Smith Way and we're putting in a brand new kitchen for them. And I just wanted to let you know, if you ever need anything for me, then just you give me a call. He's not there asking for an order, he's not, He's just doing something ultimately, to me, extremely creative to introduce himself to the other people in the neighborhood. And guess what? If Mr. and Mrs. Johnson have a good experience and the neighbors are asking, hey, tell me about your experience. Oh, yeah, that guy left the, the hang tag on our door. So be innovative. And one of the things I just want to share about Josh, absolutely love him and his young family, you know. They just got back from the most incredible Disney vacation with their two beautiful kids. And he sent me a check. He sent me a text and said, Mike, this is the first time in my life I've gone on a vacation and didn't care about how much I spent. Now, as a coach, that's a sense of pride. But the point is the entrepreneurial journey should have all of this as part of it. It, it, it can be beautiful. Um, here's the next piece. Another way to grow the customers offer something free. Everybody likes free stuff. People are oftentimes scared to use your business or your service or buy your product because they want to sample it. Another client of mine, of mine the beautiful Erica, she runs a, a, a cafe and it's a vegan restaurant. And my wife and I go there often because you know we're, she's vegan, I'm vegetarian. We got into this world many years ago, but um, my point is that she makes the most incredible donuts the vegan donuts, but guess what? She couldn't sell any because people were scared. They used to going off and getting a Dunkin' Donut. Actually, I, I think Dunkin' is pretty much all over the country now. I can tell you in New England, it's, it, it is the place to get your donuts. Um, but she couldn't sell her vegan donuts because people didn't know what they taste like. So we came up with this idea. How about on every table when people come in, you know how sometimes you go into a Mexican restaurant and you get some chips and salsa? She put a little couple of little teeny donuts. If there were four people at the table, she'd put little tiny donuts on the table. And her sales of her vegan chocolate donuts went through the roof. Why? Because she eliminated fear. She gave away something for free. You probably have seen this at food courts and liquor stores and grocery stores. 
there's always someone giving something away for free so that you can try it and sample it. Um, you know, I do the same thing in my world. You know, I will give away, I'm giving away a free book today. You know, but it, it's a chance to get a sample. This, this webinar is a free webinar. You get to sample how wonderful Steve's events are and, and hopefully you enjoy um, the, the information I'm sharing, but it's giving away something free. And the last piece of, of the building new, uh, getting new customers is, is networking. You know, I, I truly believe that the no like and trust factor is the single most important thing for you to do in your business to grow it. Uh, people like to do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And when you can elevate your game and you get that, you know, like your target market is the bullseye, right? But there are people that know the people that are in your target market. So if your target market is the red right in the middle, there's people around in the white that are already doing business with that person. This is why I am so passionate about the organization that we live in. BNI is the best in the world at this. It's the greatest organization when it comes to networking. But networking is not just, well, we, we've all been Zoomers for the last couple of years. I know that we're kind of going back into in person in a lot of cases, but networking can be trade shows. Networking can be um, chamber of commerce. Networking can be a variety of different things. But when you are able to expand your world and, find, and have people know you, like you, and trust you, you have a much better chance of getting to that next level. So again, in the world of Google, go on and just type in, how do I add or the, the 10 best ways to add customers to the world of florists? Or what are the 10 best ways to add customers in the world of software development or website, whatever it may be? Google is a wonderful thing. It gives you lots of things to think about, but I challenge you, spend time. All of this is designed for one thing. I'm gonna finish with this, is spend time on your business. And when you look at this, when you look at these three options, step back early in the morning, think about how can I increase the average order? How can I increase the frequency of order? How can I increase the number of customers in my business? So I'm gonna leave this up for a second again. Um, this is my book. I've got a lot more stuff in here. You can go to the savagesecrets.com or you, uh, savagesecrets.com slash triple or you can scan. Like I would say two years ago when people saw this QR code, they wouldn't know what the heck to do. And quite frankly, neither did I. But we just quickly found out that we can't eat at a restaurant unless we can, unless we can uh, QR code the, the menu. So um, the, the beauty of one of the you know, many bad things about COVID, but one of the beauties is it, it taught us how to, to, to live in a Zoom world and, and use QR codes again. So um, again, if you ever have a question, shoot me an email, info at thesavagesecrets.com. I'm going to finish with this. If you're an entrepreneur, this is, this is, I live on a, I live on a, um, a, a reservoir and I go down to the reservoir in the morning. I meditate and I do my morning routine. And this was a couple, couple of months ago. And I found this rock sitting out on the dock where I go. And there's a, there's a walking trail around, uh, around our reservoir. And what I found is that little kids in the summertime, they go and they put the, these little, uh, I forgot exactly what they're called, uh, message rocks or hot rocks or or good kind rocks or things like that, but they write these little messages on there. And this was what I found one morning, I was just sitting there and took a picture of it. And this really is the essence of the entrepreneur. We get battered, we get slammed against the rock sometimes, it becomes super difficult. And, and when you have the mental capacity, when you have the toughness um, and you just don't give up, this is, the, this is the secret. And I always challenge, I say, the biggest mistake I think that most entrepreneurs make is they try to figure stuff out on their own. You know, it's a long, slow journey. The, the, the world of entrepreneurship can be very lonely. And I'll, I'm right before my last slide, if your bathroom mirror is your board of advisors, it might be fun to invite Mike to the next meeting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close, and I told Steve I would do this. Um, if you have an opportunity, whether physically or virtually, to go to the 2022 BNI National Conference in San Diego, it is going to be a momentous event. This is the first time in three years we actually get a whole bunch of human beings that go into a room. It is also offered virtually. And if you sign up virtually, you are going to get one year access to all of the speakers 
um, that are going to be on stage as well as the virtual speakers. This is a absolutely amazingly power packed lineup. Um, you can you, uh, you've probably gotten the emails from BNI corporate, but um, April 29th and 30th. Um, if you if you can't find it, go to that Miss, Mr. Google again and search BNI events. It will come up. Um, so with that, I am Q and A. Uh, any questions that you might have of me, um, you know, I'm, I'm wide open. I don't know if uh, there's stuff in the chat box, Steve, but you know, so, I'm yeah, all ears. Well, a couple of questions uh, around, you, you just got a lot of uh, thanks for the presentation and great ideas, um, which is great. Um, someone asked if you would be willing to share the slides because they were writing too fast. <laughs> well, what, I, what, what I will tell you is I know that this is, um, this is recorded and mm. Steve will send you the link to the video yep. so you can watch it again. That's true, you can. Um, Howard is asking, uh, will you do a one-to-one -one with him? Of course. There you go, Howard. Send an email to Mike, get that started. Um, let's see, I don't see any other specific questions in here. I'm just kind of checking through the chat. Um, let's see. So, so let me, let me throw it out to the team and, uh, you know, the audience and just say, yeah. why don't you share with me, um, a challenge that you might be having in your business or in your entrepreneurial journey? You know, we're all going through these ups and downs and highs and lows. It's kind of like, what challenge might you be having right now in your business? Um, you know, cause if you're, if you're an entrepreneur, there's, there's all sorts of different challenges. The challenges can be, you know, I'm growing too fast. The challenges can be, I can't find new customers. Challenge can be, I don't have enough cash. Um, there's a whole variety of different challenges. So um, whatever you, you know, if there's any questions on that. Let's see, okay, here comes some QA, here we go. All right, uh, what was before offer something free and networking? You missed those two. Oh, she did, I'm sorry, Ginger. Um, what was that again? Uh, well, uh, on your presentation before offer something free and networking. Um, so network, um, offer something free. Um, it was uh, be innovative. You know, come up with come up with ways to stand out in the eyes of your audience. Um, it, it is, uh, or I should say, in the eyes of your ideal client or target market, um, because everyone can do average. You know, it, it, it's you know, average is easy. Um, you know, oftentimes they have some of the best, Steve's a copywriter, but some of the best billboards that are out there are the ones that, you know, stop you in your tracks, you're driving down the road, I'm like, wow, look at that, it's a picture of a pineapple, like, what the hell does a pineapple do? Oh, pineapple marketing and sales, you know, or, or pine, you know, so different ways of being able to stand out. Um, my friend Josh, to put the, the, the hangers on the, uh, the doors of all the people in the neighborhood, Brilliant, very, very creative approach. We've got two questions, one in the chat and one in Q&A, talking about finding good salespeople because uh, you know it's hard to find good employees these days and everyone seems to be moving around from job to job. You know what, I, I, I wish I had an easy answer to this one. The, right now in our society, there isn't an easy answer. Um, finding good employees is is brutal and and there is you know a million ways you can try and do it on your own you can hire a um a, a recruiter to help you with that you know i personally when i'm hiring new people right now i'm not doing it on my own i'm not going on to the online because it's just too much it it to me is worth the money to spend with a recruiter yeah. to help narrow down and find those employees because they do all the work for you um, it's expensive. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's expensive, wow. but a great employee is worth its weight in gold. Um, and then another thing is as, as you grow your business, when you have the opportunity to become a phenomenal business to work for, people will gravitate to you. That becomes what your, what your DNA is of your business, your DNA, your culture, your belief systems. When you, you know, I, I said earlier, we live in a five-star world. Guess what? We live in, in our employees live in a five-star world and you are being rated every single day. 
You may not be rated publicly if you do performance reviews and things like that. You should be getting feedback from your employees. But if your employee is having a miserable job, do you think they're telling their spouse and their friends over a cocktail? You bet you they are. So, you know, th those would be two pieces of advice is just make sure that, that, that you have a culture that is so powerful that your employees, number one, want to go and brag about you. Because just like I talked about referrals, one of the best referrals that people often don't even think about is, hey, I'm going to go out to my employees and ask them, hey, do you know anybody that might be in the market to get a job? You know, because if they're going to say, damn, you don't want to work at this place, <laughs> that's, that's not going to be good. But they can also be a tremendous source of referral. Right, right. Um, okay, so Maria's got a good question. Um, I don't know if this is your your wheelhouse, Mike, but she's talking about uh, moving her online Facebook business uh, to Instagram and uh, where do you recommend or how do you determine which is the best place for you to uh, put your business online? Um, you are 100% correct, Steve. This is not my wheelhouse. Um, the, the world of social media changes so rapidly. Um, I was on a call with my social media coach who said, Mike, you got to understand that, you know, what you're doing, that the next two platforms you got to be on is you got to be on TikTok and Instagram. I'm like, I'm a business guy. I'm not going to be on TikTok and Instagram. Yes, you will. Mike, the fastest growing yeah. audience right now is TikTok and Instagram because the world of Facebook is becoming so expensive. And Facebook is Instagram, by the way. They are the same company. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't have a, a solid answer. You, I would say spend a boatload of time doing the research and doing some testing um, because once you start you know, writing that check for that stuff or having your credit card charged, man, oh man, can it build up really quickly. So yeah, but yeah I'm, I'm, a, I'm a marketing addict. I flat out love it. I flat out lo love learning about it, but I'm by no means qualified enough and I'll be the first to admit I try to hire to my weaknesses. I ain't good at that. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, here's a question. How do we do a maintenance plan for clients who do estate planning? So I'm guess I'm guess you're a maintenance plan for clients that do estate planning. I guess I don't necessarily understand. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'd probably need a little more detail on that one. Uh, I, it's an anonymous attendee. So uh, you may want to just email Mike directly with that question. Yeah, sorry about that. I can't tell if this is a, a, an estate planning attorney or someone in a different industry. So that would all depend. All right, uh, when will this recording be posted? All right, so Abby's like, I want it done now. So uh, give me till, let's see, it's one o'clock. Meeting after that, meeting after that, uh, by 3.30, it will be up on our YouTube channel. And you can just um, Google, since we've been talking about Google all day, BNI Team USA YouTube will get you to that link. I, I just saw one, Steve. Aaron asked, uh, Halverson yeah. asked a, a really good question. Um, need to find new customers. We offer disinfecting service, continue to disinfect 90 days. And she said, education is key. Uh -huh. That one thing, those three letters, three words, those three words, education is key, can be the absolute difference between success and failure of your business. And what do I mean by that? I said at the beginning, every single company solves a problem in one way, shape or form, we solve problems. And oftentimes your ideal client, your ideal customer avatar, your target market is asking questions. And one of the things that I always recommend to my clients is, Create the list of 10 questions that your client is asking. Create a list of 10 questions that your client should be asking. And so that's going to give you 20 questions. And what you need to do with those two questions to become a, an authority in your world is answer those questions. So what is one of the questions, hypothetically, that my target market, my audience might be asking? Gee, Mike, how do I grow sales? So what did Mike do? Mike created a webinar that answered the question, how do we grow sales? And so in the world of disinfecting, you know, there could be the question like, well, why do I need to disinfect my house? Um, what are the ways to disinfect? 
what are the what are the dangers the top three dangers that your home can experience if you don't disinfect like you know if you sent that to my house guess what i'd probably read it <laughs> no but but the point is it's like who is your target market and what are the questions that he or she is asking and once you get that list of questions you need to create answers in the form of content. It can be written content. You can hire Steve Tenuzzo. It can be digital content in the form of video. It can be YouTube. It can be blogs. It can be you going, doing lunch and learns. You know, but you want to be able to educate people in the world that you're in because they've got the questions. They've got a whole bunch of questions. If you answer those questions with education-based content, what happens to you? You move up in the know, like, and trust ladder and that ultimately is going to become the thing that pushes someone from hey i'm a prospect to i'd love to do business with you all right hopefully that made hopefully that made sense i thought that was a great question yeah that was great uh and a good answer and i think we are out of questions so this looks like a good time to wrap up since it's almost one o'clock already or whatever time it is near you. Uh, thank you all for being on today. Uh, there are links in there for all of Mike's stuff and um, make sure that uh, if you have any questions, Mike, what's your email for them to reach oh, out yeah. to? Yeah, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do, Steve? Let me just let that me in the pop, chat? pop into the chat box my Great. my information. That way, um, and it's actually my BNI, BNI chat box stuff. Okay. Great. Um, so while Mike's doing that, uh, for everyone uh, next week, uh, I'm going to be sending out an email. I'm on vacation next week, but I'm back on Friday just for you for this webinar. Jenny Butts and I are doing kind of a, a fun networking game show style thing. So uh, it should be fun. We'll have some prizes and things. So show up for that, please. So and, I, I also, uh, we'll I also put into the chat, Steve, um, yeah. the, link, the link to the... Uh, the BNI global event. The, the, oh, that's um, great. Yeah. BNI. Um, so everybody, um, um, make sure you save the chat box. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you click the three little buttons on the right and then say show in folder and it will bring up all the, all the good information. So yep. I, let, let me finish with this, Steve. I'm again, yep. beyond grateful for the opportunity. I, I flat out love everything that you do here. I've been bragging about this, uh, this Friday afternoon, you know, Friday morning, if you're on the West Coast uh, event. So, you know, I think it's great. And, and I encourage all the BNI people to share this event with your BNI teams because this Friday at noon is, is solid. 